Hello YouTube, the Zeiss 55mm 1.8. I was originally going to compare this lens to the Canon 50mm 1.8, the plastic fantastic, uh, but I decided not to. So in this video I will tell you why. So my name is Harry, this is my channel Future Shock Digital for all things filmmaking and media. Uh, I haven't made a video for a while. Uh, that's because I moved from Alice Springs in the middle of the desert of Australia to the Gold Coast. Uh, in Alice Springs, I was teaching media for five years, uh, teaching filmmaking in a high school, uh, and it was a great time. I've had this lens for a while now. Uh, I got it in 2020, and um, I was using it for the first year on my Sony 6500, uh, which effectively was an 85 millimeter lens, uh, quite bulky, quite heavy, but it, the results were pretty good. I bought it because at that time, I didn't have the opportunity to shop around. As I was living in the desert, uh, I wanted to get the best lens that money could buy. I didn't really want to take a risk of getting anything uh, subpar, so I totally just bought the name Zeiss. Zeiss sounds German, right? German engineering. The lens itself is in fact a joint venture between Sony Japan and Zeiss, uh, and is made in Japan according to the design of Zeiss. So it's not exactly German. Uh, at about a thousand Australian dollars, this is not cheap, with the Sony 50mm 1.8 lens coming in at less than half, which is also made in Japan. Uh, is it worth paying the extra? Other competitors are the 50mm 1.8 OSS, uh, which is for APS-C, hence the price. Uh, and then we have the Sony 50mm 1.2 at almost $3,000 and 50mm 1.4 Zeiss at $2,300. My original goal was to compare the Zeiss to not just any 50mm lens, uh, all the ones mentioned before, but to the old school Nifty 50, the Canon 50mm 1.8 lens, which only costs $130, uh, and I was going to use the Sigma MC11. Uh, my goal was to put the images side by side and just ask the audience, you guys, to spot which is which. Uh, the idea is, I would help you, you viewers, save almost $1,000. But when I did, when I put it all together, I soon realized that this would be a complete false comparison, a catchy video premise and total clickbait. For example, these photos look great and between these two there aren't many differences. Except of course that it took 10 shots in order to get this one, whereas the Zeiss the focus is perfect almost every time. Uh, this is due to old SLR lenses and yes in the world of mirrorless cameras nowadays the SLR is now old. Uh, they use phase detect autofocus. Whereas mirrorless cameras, they have a signal on the sensor at all times that is actively seeking focus. So cherry picking photos to make a comparison uh, is simply inaccurate. This made me realize, you know all those test videos you see on YouTube of say the, uh, the newest iPhone versus a $10,000 cinema camera? Um, they, they mostly also false comparisons. Have you noticed that they always are comparing shots in perfect well-lit conditions uh, because an iPhone simply can't compare in low light situations. Now, if there is a difference uh, in quality between the two images, uh, you can see it here uh, in the bokeh, uh, the shape of the bokeh. This is due to the aperture blades. Uh, more expensive lenses have more blades and a more rounded effect. But let's be honest, most people don't notice such things because photography isn't the most important thing in the world as much as photographers would like to believe it so. So I had to scrap that comparison video because yes, you do get what you pay for. A fair comparison would be the, the regular, the Sony 50mm 1.8 to the Zeiss 55mm, but I don't have that lens and I'm not planning uh, on getting it. What about the 1.4 and the 1.2 lens? How do those compare to the Zeiss? Okay, so let me tell you. You don't actually want a 1.2 lens or 1.4. They're heavy, they're bulky, they are big. Too much bokeh, too shallow a depth of field is not professional. In fact, it screams unprofessional. Let me explain with a history class. Once upon a time, at the beginning of digital, 35 millimeter was still king. That's because digital sensors were, had to be made smaller in order to be affordable. APS-C size sensors took off, uh, but it's still, if you wanted bokeh, uh, full frame was still the way to go. Then smartphones took hold, 
uh, and increased the idea that bokeh meant expensive and professional. But there's been a reaction to that because some filmmakers think that um, bokeh only means professional. Too much bokeh is a problem. Uh, and nowadays photographers and filmmakers shoot wide open because they can rather than they should. So a good camera guy will know when. The way I say it, it's like this. Do you like Metallica? But do you like Metallica at 7 a.m. in the morning? I don't think so. So sometimes filmmakers are just throwing in too much bokeh and there's a problem. For example, let's compare Jaws 1977 to Zack Snyder's Army of the Dead. Snyder, who was the director, also doubled as the DOP, the director of photography on this one. I'm gonna shoot the entire movie wide open. There's never gonna be a stop on any lens for the entire film. And I just feel like it's a rude thing to ask of a cinematographer. <laughs> uh, he just fails to keep characters in focus because he's opening up the aperture. Uh, characters are not in focus and they're now isolated from their background. Whereas in Jaws, characters aren't focused. You know where they are. You know that they're on a boat. You're gonna need a bigger boat. So personally, I think 1.8 is a much better starting point and much more cost effective than 1.2 and 1.4, uh, which are heavier and bigger. So keep that in mind. But how does the Zeiss perform wide open? Good, I, I guess. Look, still the golden rule applies. Close down the aperture, step down, stop down a bit, uh, 2.8, 3.5 will increase sharpness dramatically and you still get bokeh. And yes, I'm well aware of my background being out of focus. In this situation, you don't need me in the, in the context of the background. You only need me to explain what I'm saying, which is hence why I did it. Now, I've been using this a lot for time lapses. And I mean, a lot. Uh, I do have a 28 millimeter uh, F2 lens, which I'm using right now. Uh, but look at the difference. One it makes the subject majestic. Whereas the wider lens, it makes the subject look much smaller and ins insignificant, as, it's, as if it's something way off on the horizon. So I know the uh, 50 millimeter is not a landscape lens, but I think it does work quite well. Uh, I'm trying to say a little bit more about time lapses, uh, just so I can B-roll all the footage that I've done. I'm out of ideas, so I'm just gonna cut to a musical interlude. <laughs> Portraits, that's why you're here. The lens is very much a portrait lens, and this is where it shines. For video, I find 50 millimeter too tight. Uh, it's gonna require you to be dead still. Uh, walking with it is simply not possible. For vlogging, 55 millimeters is way too tight. Do you really need to see all my wrinkles? In conclusion, I do recommend this lens. Uh, that's it for me for this video. Uh, this year I hope to do more in 2024. Uh, hey, that's gonna be my slogan this year. That's my new catchphrase. Uh, do more in 2024. Uh, over and out, thank you.